Jay. So how, how, I mean, what, how did you take on running? Because I think in a lot of ways you took up running like semi-professionally and you've been running consistently since then. So what were some of the big races that you ran then and Jen? You probably met a lot of other runners. What did they teach you about running as well then? Uh, after the Mumbai marathon, half marathon, I wanted to continue with running. So I thought, let me uh, run an international marathon because uh, Mumbai marathon was a year later. So I wanted to, con- so I thought, let me run throughout because if I have a target marathon, I'll run throughout the year and kind of train for it. The last 20 weeks, of course, it would ramp up much more, but I would continue running to keep myself fit and at the end of the race make a holiday out of it mm. so that was my uh, uh just a basic goal actually it was not a very I many i thought this would a good way of of uh, tying in both family time and my training time and giving me a direction in life okay. so uh since i was studying in us i knew about the Boston Marathon and the New York City Marathon, etc. Uh, so I I I looked up. Uh, I just checked on the net, and the New York City Marathon was open for lottery races. Okay. So so I quickly filled up the form. I thought I was quite naive then. Actually, I filled up the form, and I thought like Mumbai Marathon. At the end of the form, there'll be a tick whether it's for the full marathon or the half marathon. Okay. But when I reached the end of the form, I realized it's only for the full marathon. The half oh. marathon is six months later. Oh, wow. <laughs> different day altogether. Okay. But I said, it's a lottery. Anyway, I filled up the form. Let me pay the money by credit card and just let's see what happens. Okay. And yes, a couple of weeks later, I was one of the lucky guys to win the lottery. And I was in. And suddenly from half marathon, I had to start thinking of the full marathon of 42 kilometers. Yeah. And the running group had disbanded. And that time, not many people in Mumbai were running. Now, not many people are running. Yeah. And uh, that's a good thing that's happening. happened. But that time, there were not many. I'm talking about 2010, 12 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So, so, but yes, I got the uh, thing. So I said, okay. Now then I made, I sat with my coach of that uh, half marathon team and he prepared a 20 week training plan okay for me and then he said how to how do i ramp up and all those things but i had to do it it was a self assisted kind of a training because there was nobody to guide me etc and the, it was also very very challenging because mentally to go from 21 to 42 is a huge leap of faith yeah, and yeah. that is around just one and a half years after your surgery. So my first few days was only spent on Google typing out full marathon, cardiac patient, and there was nobody who had done that. Oh, wow. So I was like, there was nobody to, and the doctor said, you can do it. But again, you'll have to do with all these do's and don'ts. And they are right to, to do such kind of thing. So I was, I at one time, I was very, very excited that I had got this opportunity. The other side, I was very, uh, it required a lot of courage. Because to be the first person like that, to at least known, there were no history. There's even on uh, there, however much I searched, I could not find any article which said that somebody had run a full marathon at that time. Got it. Yeah, cardiac surgery, open heart surgery. Okay. So yes, how do I train my mind? How do I train myself? How do I tra- tell my family that it is going to be okay for a non-athlete to do a full marathon within a year and a half after the surgery was something I had to train my mind. Actually, again, the demons in my mind, I had to tame them to say that it is possible, I'll do it. And like I said, Mumbai Madar is not easiest to run. And uh, when I got this thing, I think the lottery, it was already March, April. Okay. So so it was the peak of summer. 
when i had to start running and i tried to run in the gym uh, in a in a ac atmosphere but it was not fun mm. so because i got used to running in the outdoors so yeah during the peak summer of may and june i started running outside i it was like a huge challenge self assisted without i had to carry my so when i see my new york city pictures i look like uh, a different person because i was like overloaded with water and every <laughs> every kind of thing uh, i'm carrying it on my body and running it was something at a different uh, stage in life altogether and i used to carry my medicines i used to carry my doctors uh, details i used to carry my family details everything on my body so in case something happened to me uh, what how would some uh, reach out to me because i i didn't carry my mobile while running okay. because uh, i would sweat a lot and uh, it would get spoiled and uh, the battery anyway would be wearing off and in the night also it was not safe uh, because if you carry a lot of money or the mobile with you but yes i carried the other stuff with me so that was a challenging thing then then it came to monsoon and 2010 monsoon in mumbai was uh, that decade it was the highest monsoon Oh, wow, okay. so it there were a lot of uh, flooding in mumbai yeah. and i had to ramp up my uh, my training so i remember my first 22k when i attempted it because i had done 21 in the half marathon and i had to cross that figure and that happened to be the rainiest sunday wow but uh, i have described it in my book okay. and how i did it So you were uh, adamant on doing it outside, right? Then, Anjay, you didn't want to go to the gym at that point. Yeah, I I knew that. I, and the thing was, I didn't have uh, many free weeks uh, in training because I was working on some projects in Africa at that time. Got it. So my my work involved a lot of tra- travel to Tanzania and Botswana, etc. So it involved a lot of flying time and travel time and it was not very safe i didn't know the environment there to do training outside got it i couldn't do a 22 kilometers in tanzania got it i didn't know the routes i didn't know anything there got it so i had to factor in all of this so i couldn't waste a lot of weekends when my peak runs were happening uh, so whether it was raining or whether it was very hot i had to do it in mumbai got it so that that made it like that but it was good uh, by the time uh, november came in and we flew into uh, boston my family is there my brother's family is there so it was good to get back to the city where i i i spent one of the best times and yeah the marathon was something which is always memorable the first full marathon <laughs> and uh, to add more pressure to my marathon a lot of my relatives from the us had come to see me run the marathon oh, wow. so not only was i was i internally prepared but i had to also <laughs> be <laughs> make sure that i finish it within the time but yes it's a big 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 hurdle to cross the 21 to 42 wow. and but i i kind of just had my training plan with me whenever i slowed down i was to keep reminding myself that yeah i have done 36 kilometers i have done this thing so please look at it and continue <laughs> so so that was my way of motivating that's, myself yeah, yeah that so. that's amazing manager i think it's so i mean i don't want to i know there's so much more that's in the book for anyone listening to this talk if you want to know more about how Um, Thananjay has actually run a marathon in six continents across the world. There's just one more that he hopes to do very soon, and I think um, you're going to see a lot more of uh, Thananjay talking about his writing. And I I recommend following him on LinkedIn because he does post a lot of articles. There's recently an article on the Ageist magazine uh, talking about uh, Thananjay's journey. So if you do want to understand more about running. Uh, but also his professional career please follow him on linkedin and uh, the best thing i'd recommend you to do right now is as soon as you listen to this talk please go and purchase a hard copy 
or e copy of fuel for my journey which is uh, am i saying that right dhananjay it's fuel fuel yeah. for my journey which is dhananjay's wonderful book um i'm going to get my hard copy and e copy soon as well and uh, because i had the pleasure of knowing dhananjay in person i knew this was going to be an amazing book i i personally took up running more recently than anja you know and i'm not as prolific as you but i hope to train for a marathon some day and i think just listening to you inspires me to you know take this step forward